Hello and welcome to the fourth video in this series of videos about the low register long tones exercise worksheet. You can find that worksheet in a Google Drive link in the video description below. If you've got any problems getting to it, let me know and I'll try and sort something out. Today we're going to be looking at exercise four, which in my eyes sort of encompasses one of the hardest areas of playing the saxophone and that is the very bottom of the saxophone, but it's got a bit of a twist. So the low register and the very low register in particular, I'm talking about low D flats downwards on the saxophone have a real tendency to sort of honk and be quite a sort of harsh honky sound, which isn't always what we want. Sometimes we do want that, but other times we don't. And it's much easier to honk those notes out than to sort of make them sound controlled and stable. So this exercise really tackles that. And essentially all we've got is a chromatic descent going from a D flat down to a C natural, then a B natural, and then a low B flat. And these are sort of the, the lowest four notes on the instrument. And in my opinion, they're the hardest notes to play quietly. So to try and sort of help people develop that quiet playing in that register of the saxophone, I've written a dynamic marking, which starts at forte, so quite loud, on the D flat, and then it diminuendos throughout the uh, the seven bars of notes there to a pianissimo on the low B flat. This is really challenging, but I've I think it's probably the best way to approach this kind of thing, rather than starting on a low B flat starting quietly. The reason I've got the forte there is to encourage you just to get that note started, and you know just to get an idea of how the note feels. And then you can, once the note is started, it's easier to adjust the dynamic to go a bit quieter. If I just show you sort of the, what we're trying to achieve, essentially we're trying to achieve, the real goal of this is to achieve control on the low B flat. The low B flat's quite a hard note to start, um, especially if your saxophone isn't sealing 100%. So I've written it starting on a low D flat just to give you some, some room to adjust and get used to it. Essentially what I'm trying to teach here is the difference between a low, a honky low B flat, which is something like this, and a quiet and controlled B flat. And it's really hard. I mean, I'm not, I'm not particularly strong at this area of the horn and it's one of those things, a bit like the vibrato, where this is actually a great tool for me to remind myself of what I need to be doing um, to really get, get a grasp on those notes. So I'll show you what the exercise is like. I will set the tempo at 80 BPM. This is quite a hard tempo. If you are struggling to get through the whole phrase in one breath, speed up the tempo a little bit rather than breathe in the middle of the phrase. So this particular exercise is all about controlling the air through the phrase so that we land on that low B flat nice and quietly. And I think if you take a breath in the middle of this line, you will lose the flow a little bit and you might have some sort of, uh, you might stall a little bit and I don't think it's the best way to conduct the exercise. So if you can't play the whole exercise all in one, speed up the tempo rather than take a breath in the middle. I've marked a tempo range from 80 to 100 BPM. Those tempos are great for soprano and alto saxophone. It might be a bit of a push on tenor and baritone. Um, I would say for those two, maybe try 100 BPM because they take a little bit more volume of air. But um, but if you do need to take it faster by a little bit, feel free to do that. I probably wouldn't go anywhere faster than 115 to 120 beats per minute though. So I'll get the metronome on. Okay, and this is how the exercise goes. really hard work actually. So and the goal with this is basically just to get as quiet as you can on that low B flat so So 
the goal with this is basically to try and get that low B flat as quiet as you can. So I'll do it again. It's really hard work. I mean, it will really test your lung capacity. I'm doing it sat down right now. And I'll admit it's actually quite hard to get that low B flat to be, you know, quite full and have enough air for it. So if you are doing it sat down and you're struggling, try standing up because imagine if you're, this is your body here. Um, it's a very dodgy looking body, um, but this is your top half and these are your legs. If your legs are, are at 90 degrees to your abdomen here, um, then it's going to compress your the space for your diaphragm to expand into So if you're struggling with it sat down stand up and it should be quite a lot easier because it gives you much more space to extend your lung capacity there are a few things that might come up in this and the big thing is Notes jumping up the octave as you get quieter I think that's probably the problem that most people will sort of encounter if I just play it on a low D flat for now It'll sound something like this and you might get this sort of jumping up and down the octaves um, especially as you get quieter it's quite a tricky thing and the concept to grasp here is a concept of air pressure as opposed to sheer volume of air because as we're getting quieter I mean, you can try this now on your instrument if you play really loud as loud as you can on a low note on the saxophone you won't be able to play that note as long as you could play that note played quietly and the reason for that is it takes more air to increase the size of the reeds vibrations so that's going to make it louder and what we're doing is we're getting quieter is we are reducing the amount of air going through the instrument that's not lots of people say you need to keep putting loads of air in um, but if you actually want to play quietly, you do need to reduce the amount of air that goes into the instrument. But the tricky thing to balance is that as the amount of air that goes into the instrument changes, you need to keep the actual pressure and speed of the air that hits the reed the same. So there's a tendency for people as they get quieter to tighten up their embouchure and to sort of clench down a bit with their jaw and bite a little bit in the hope that this is going to basically keep the notes stable and essentially that's a that's a bit of a hack and it's not really what we want to do the key thing is tongue position and i could wax lyrical about the virtues of having good tongue positioning throughout the range of the instrument for days on end um, but with this it really is essential that you make sure that your tongue is very high in your mouth and i've spoken about this before in previous videos that you need to have a, an idea of the saxophone hiss, um, which essentially is where the back of your tongue is very, very high. So when you're playing, you want to be able to feel your molars, which are the back teeth of your top jaw against the sides of your tongue. That's how high it is. And it needs to be so high that when you blow out fast with your tongue in the right position, you should get a quite a loud hissing noise. So. That's not, that's not my teeth, that's not a my. if I do it with my mouth open. It's all because the top of my tongue or the back of my tongue is really, really high and it's creating a tiny gap for the air to go through as it travels down through the mouth. So making sure that your tongue is very high will help keep the stability of those notes. And in fact, having the back of your tongue high is, is helpful for all ranges of the saxophone but it's really really pertinent when you're doing this kind of low register quiet stuff so in a very short summary what we're doing is we're playing in the very low register of the horn we're trying to keep the tone stable and consistent we're trying to make sure that we get quieter throughout the phrase so that we're as quiet as we can be on the low b flat but we want to avoid jumping up the octave accidentally um, and playing the harmonics of the low b flat so a few key pointers there is to keep your jaw very relaxed 
and keep your lips quite, although your embouchure has to be stable and supportive, it can't be tight and pinched. And the way you'll keep the consistency in that low register stuff without clamping down with your jaw and your lips is to make sure that your tongue is in the right position. So this is a really, really tricky one. I would argue it's probably in the top five things on the saxophone or maybe even the top three things on the saxophone that are hardest to do. Um, I mean, I've been playing for six years. I'd like to say I have quite a good grasp of some of the extended techniques, multiphonics, um, like altissimo, that sort of stuff, flutter tongue, all of that I'm actually quite comfortable with now. But even still, actually slap tongue is still quite hard for me. But even still, I still find this quiet playing at the very bottom of the horn is probably the thing I struggle with the most. So if you're a beginner, don't feel disheartened if you're finding this difficult because it is, it's, I don't know, it's really hard. And I think a lot of saxophone players will agree that playing quietly at the very bottom of the horn is a very tricky thing to do. But if you can nail this earlier on in your playing career, then it will really set you up for success in the future. And the last thing to mention before I wrap this up is that this kind of area of the horn, all the, uh, all the bell keys down here, they are probably the most likely places for a leak to develop. A leak is a mechanical problem where the pads don't close properly on the tone holes. So if you're really struggling, take your instrument to your teacher or your technician and get them to just play through it and see if there is a leak. And if there is a leak, get it fixed and it should make it a lot easier as well. I would say this is, yeah, this is probably the area of the horn where if there's a leak, you're gonna find out about it, especially when you're trying to play quietly. So I think that about wraps it up for all the general guidance I have for this particular exercise. If you're having any problems that I haven't mentioned, I can't think of many others that would be the case that wouldn't be fixed with fixing tongue position and relaxing the jaw a bit. But if you are having any other problems and the guidance I've given here just doesn't seem to help it at all, leave a comment below and I will get to it and I'll try and find a solution for you. Of course, if you found this video helpful or if you liked this video, please give it a like. Comment if you wanna leave any nice comments. And of course, any feedback is really welcomed. Last of all, only, I think it's only 6% of my channel viewers are currently subscribed. So if you do find yourself coming back to this channel, you know, multiple times, please do hit the subscribe button. Helps me out a bunch. And also hopefully it will keep you updated with, you know, all the great new saxophone content that I'm coming out with. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.